Hello, crafty friends. My name's Alicia, but you can call me Crafty Al. And I was getting ready to make one more set of cards using the February 2024 sheet load. And since I'm going to switch it up just a little bit, I thought that you might like to see it. So I hope you'll stick around, see how I'm going to change it up and the cards that I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring the bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Each month on my channel, I put out a free printable called Sheet Load of Cards. I give you a new sketch, supply list, and cutting guides PDF so you can make the most of your cards and yield a sheet load. This is usually anywhere between 6 and 12 cards depending on the sketch and paper size and it is either going to help you build up your card stash or maybe make cards to give to friends or family members. If you haven't yet seen the debut video where I tell you how you can download the free printable, it will be linked in the description box below. If you want to see how I made my first set in the process video, I also have a link down there. Before I show you how I'm going to switch up the set just a little bit today, I want to show you some of the cards I've made with the printable. Each month, because I send cards to some channel members, I usually end up making more sheet load sets than I actually share on camera. But this month I have shared a couple. The first one, here's a look at two of them. And this is what I made for my first set and it's in that process video. The second set I made was during the brand new Sheet Load Live series where I made eight clear cards. If you haven't yet seen that video, I will link the replay down in the description box below. Over the weekend, I did take one sheet of 12 by 12 pattern paper and I used the front and back to make a set that looks like this. And I just realized today that I'm going to need some more for channel members, so that is what inspired this new set that I'm going to create. Speaking of channel members, I did want to take a minute for a special channel member shout out. Recently, Susan Rushton upgraded her membership level to Paper Trimmer. Thank you so much, Susan. Your support is greatly appreciated. Thank you as well to all of my channel members. You keep me creating here on YouTube and Sheetload of Cards free for all subscribers. If you're ever interested in learning more about the perks of channel membership, I hope you'll check out the link in the description box below or the join button under this video. Spellbinders is now selling pattern paper from Paper Rose in their online store and they sent me a couple 6x6 pads to play with. Today I'm going to be using the Urban Garden Collection, which I just love the black and whites and then that pop of maroon or burgundy. I pre-selected three sheets that I'm going to be using today, and the way I'm switching it up. Instead of using two different pattern papers per card like the sketch calls for, I am going to be using the same pattern paper for all four pieces. This is just another way to show you of how you can make sheet load your own. So from these three pieces of paper that I chose, I am going to get six total cards, but each one again will just use one pattern at a time. As I get into today's process, I will tell you about other products and tools I use for my cards, but as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, feel free to leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! I'm going to get started by cutting my three pattern papers and there is a little bit of a change from that first process video. I'm going to start out the same by cutting two three quarter inch tall strips off the bottom of my pattern paper. 
But now when I rotate it back portrait, instead of cutting those four little pieces and then the two larger ones, I'm actually gonna cut this in half at three inches wide so I get two pieces from the top. Now later I will cut these down a little bit smaller. I did those same cuts on the remaining two pattern papers and then I went back in and those strips at the bottom, I cut them to four and a quarter inches wide. Now there is a little bit of scraps left over and later I'll show you how I made this a no scrap set. For my card stocks, I am using gray for the card base, and for the matting on the cards, I'm gonna use a burgundy. Now, it is gonna be the same cutting as per the original instructions, but I only cut until I yielded six of each of the pieces. Now, don't forget, if you need any dimensions or you want a little bit closer look at the full process, to check out the debut and the process video linked in the description box. Off camera, I cut and folded my card bases and I cut a piece of white cardstock for the inside so the personal message would be easy to read. I also cut some of the semi-circles and I embossed those with a dots embossing folder. Now don't forget channel members, you do have access to the free SVG to help you with this shape. And finally, while I was off camera, I used this Hello die from Spellbinders to die cut eight sentiments out of black cardstock. For this next step, we're gonna be cutting down those large pieces of pattern paper into their final sizes. Now the reason I left these whole is that I want the scene or the pattern to flow across those three pieces with just those little openings between each one. So I'm gonna start on this first one by cutting three quarters of an inch off the left. I am using the cut lines to the left just so I can slide it a little bit easier. The second cut is made at one and a half inches and you'll see there that I did hold it in place with a piece of Scotch removable tape. Now for this second one, I'm gonna show you a little bit different. I cut three quarters off the left, rotated it 100 degrees, and cut three quarters off the left again, or three quarters of an inch. This way you don't have to get out the removable tape, but do remember to always rotate your pattern papers back to the original layout. I finished cutting the rest of these pieces, and then it was time to get them put onto their cardstock mats. For this, it's just going to be like on the original video where I am going to adhere the outside edges first and then that center one right between them at the same level. Don't forget, I do have tips in that original process video. One thing that you'll want to make sure if you do a card like this where you use the same pattern across is before you put down your pattern paper onto the mat, make sure it is how it should be oriented so that pattern flows. Ask me how I know to remind you of that. <laughs> I finished matting most of these pieces off camera and I also added the horizontal strips to their cardstock mat. All of the pattern paper pieces were ready so now I could start adding them to the card fronts. I added the large matted piece flat down onto the center of the card base and then I added adhesive to that skinny strip and placed it about a third of the way up from the bottom all the way across the card. Now you can definitely adjust the height of this piece if you want, put it in the center, put it toward the top, make it work for your focal points. Once those were all in place, I then added the semicircle to the front of each card and the hello die cut. For the semicircle, I used ATG, and for the die cut, I used some reverse tweezers to hold it in place while I added liquid glue to the back. To make sure those sentiments were well adhered, I placed them under a clear block and I let everything sit for about five minutes before moving on. Then, to finish off the cards, I brought in some color essential gems in the silver mix from Spellbinders, and I added three to the front of each card. I put these in kind of a triangle around the word, just to add a little bit of sparkle. And here are some close-up looks at the finished cards.
I hope you enjoyed seeing how I switched up the February 2024 sheet load just a little bit and created today's card. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Don't forget, if you want to download the free printable, check out the debut video in the description box below. And until my next one, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.